So yes guys, let's start question number 23. In preparing the consolidated balance sheet of H Limited as on 31st December 2011, you are required to show clearly what amount if any it would include in respect of W Limited with regard to cost of control, P&L, minority interest. So if you observe, what he is asking is step 5, step 6 and step 7. That's it. So you need to identify the cost of control, minority interest, reserves for CBS. You understand, when he is asking these three steps, compulsory we have to follow the remaining steps as well. We need to do analysis. We need to have the distribution table. Unless and until we have these two, how do we even go about the, the you know, the rest of the steps? So starting from 1 up to 7, the only exemption that he has given is he did not ask you the balance sheet. That's it. Balance sheet is not required. Only the remaining 7 working notes are required now. Under each of the following assumptions, that means... Those 1, 2, 3 that you see are 3 different questions. So first one, treat it separately. Identify cost of control, minority interest, this is for CBS. Second one, and again one more part of the question or one more question separately. Again calculate cost of control, minority interest, this is for CBS. Third one is again a separate question. So basically we are trying to solve it under different different questions. So let's read only the first part. I am not touching the second part in any way. First one. 48,000 shares then in issue of W Limited were acquired at 75,000 as on 1st March 2009. H Limited participated in the proposed dividend of 8,000. Leave the second and the third bit. We will read it later on. Come down below. The balance sheet of W Limited as on 31st December 2011 showed as follows. Share capital of 80,000. Undistributed profits are 24,000. 7% debentures of 40,000. Unnecessary information that 7% debentures. The PL appropriation for 4 years as on 31st December 2011 is as given to you. So 2008, 9, 10, 11, 4 years PL is being given. Balance at the beginning of the year is 16,000. Profit for the year is 14,000. And 8,000 has been paid as dividend. Next year, opening balance of 22. He got a profit of 30. He paid 9,000 dividend. Next year, opening 43. But he paid a bonus out of that 43,000, 16,000 paid by way of bonus. Guys, remember guys, even though he paid bonus in 2010, the bonus is always assumed to be paid on a FIFO basis. That means whatever first profit we got or the earliest profit we got, that will be utilized for the bonus. So that means this 16,000 rupees of bonus has been paid out of this 16,000 opening reserve standing on at the beginning of 2008. Got it? So that is a normal assumption for bonus. bonus. Bonus is always paid out of accumulated reserves of the past. So whenever it is paid out of accumulated reserves of the past, we need to follow the FIFO basis. First profit, whatever you got, that profit will be eliminated first for the issue of the bonus. He has issued the bonus in 2010, current year profit of 7,000, 6,000 declared by way of dividend. Next year, 28,000 opening figure, 4,000 rupees loss in the next year. So closing balance of 24,000. That's it. So we have to start. Check the first bit. 48,000 shares were required. Then an issue of W Limited at a cost of 75,000 on 1st March 2009. Guys, when did he buy? 1st March 2009. Then an issue of W Limited. That means he is entitled to receive bonus in the year 2010. So this 48,000 shares are pre-bonus. So we have to get what is the post-bonus shares by adding the number of bonus shares. So, how much is the percentage of bonus? Can anyone calculate the bonus? Bonus is 16,000 for 80,000 share capital. Absolutely wrong. Because that 80,000 share capital is on 1st December 2011. That means 80,000 is after bonus. So, what was before bonus? 80,000 minus 16,000. So, what was your pre-bonus share capital? 64. On 64, he got 16. So, how much is the bonus? 1 is to 4. 1 is to 4 is a bonus. Next. So, he's, he participated in the proposed dividend of 8,000. Guys, check. Where is 8,000 dividend? 8,000 dividend is 2008. 8,000 dividend is the year, is a year 2008 dividend. So, that's 8,000. When did he acquire? 1st March 09. If he is receiving that 8,000, that 8,000 is received for 2008 year. In which he was not even a shareholder. So, that entire dividend of 8,000 will be considered as? Pre-acquisition dividend. One more pre-acquisition is there. Out of this 9,000 dividend also, when did he buy? 1st March. So when he is buying on 1st March, understand 2 months dividend is pre, balance 10 months is 
post. So this is one more thing that we have to remember. Very, very careful. Start solving. Normal. As usual, how we used to start. Date of acquisition, shareholding pattern, my analysis. Then comes my remaining working notes. Straightforward, same thing. But only thing is, only one reserve is there. There is only one reserve that exists. First March 2009 is my date of acquisition. Next comes the shareholding pattern. Remember, you have to take post bonus pattern. Number of shares held and percentage holdings. Who is purchasing the shares? W Limited is purchasing the shares, I guess. No. H Limited is purchasing in W. So, H Limited purchased how many shares? 48,000 shares. But he is entitled to receive a bonus of 1 is to 4. So, 1 is to 4 bonus, he will get 12,000 rupees. So, 12,000 shares as bonus shares. His total number of shares becomes 60,000. Minority holds whatever balance shares. With the total share capital now is 80,000 after bonus. Each share is 1 rupee, so 80,000 shares. Minority interest is 20,000. Just give me a share holding pattern of 75,25. Happily controlling interest is there. So we can start solving. You need analysis. Because the date of acquisition is in between, we need to keep splitting the pro profits accordingly. So, analysis. We can skip the distribution, guys. We'll distribute it here only because there's only one reserve. Analysis of reserves of W Limited, that is a subsidiary, with respect to date of acquisition that is 1st March 2009 only PNL that is what I am talking about there is no other reserve balance as on 31st March 2011 31st December 2011 calendar years is what is formed Framing up and the PL balance at the end of the year is 24,000. Last 2011 end 24 start splitting. I'm talking about first March. On first March, I don't know the balance, right? So let's take the nearest balance. Balance as on. Take it on 31st March 09. I don't have the balance. I'll take it on 31st December 2008. This I have. I need to add two months of the 2009 as well. So we'll consider about this. Check this now. 2008 balance carried forward is 22,000. Anyways, I have to split from 2009 two months. So let's try to put up an additional one. What is the profit of 2009 then? Profit of 2009. Check, check, check. Profit of 2009. He got 30,000 profit. He paid 9,000 dividend. 9,000 dividend also can be reduced. Why you want to write another line? So happily we can start writing it as 30,000 30, minus 9,000. Straight forward I will write it as 21,000. So balance should be profit of 2010 and 11. Ha huh, guys. Relax. Now, if you observe 2010 profit 7000, dividend declared 6000. What is the remaining profit? 
thousand. Two thousand eleven loss of four thousand. Profit of one thousand in two thousand ten loss of four thousand in two thousand eleven. Basically, this figure should be a negative three thousand. Observe one frustrating thing in this: twenty-two plus twenty-one, forty-two. Forty-two minus three, thirty-nine. But what is this? Forty-three minus three. I'm sorry, forty. So forty thousand should be the total here, but I'm getting only twenty-four thousand at the top. What was that? I missed that bonus. And where do I deduct bonus? Should I deduct it here because I paid it in 2010? Bonus is always paid out of initial beginning reserve. So out of this 22,000 less bonus, I did not deduct bonus initially because I want you people to understand, guys. Bonus though is paid in 2010, I will reduce it from the reserve at the beginning only. So I will not reduce it from 2010 reserves. Not possible. So what you reduce it from that particular year is only the dividend. Bonus is paid out of accumulated reserves. So what I paid in 2010 is out of 2008 reserves. Now you can check. Always cross verify. Cross verify. Cross verify. Then you should get the 24,000. 6 plus 21 minus 3. Perfect. 24. This 6,000 is pure pre-acquisition. I don't have any doubts regarding that. But here, this is a problem. Because here I have profit of 2009 and my date of acquisition is 1st March, so this I will split up to 1st March, 1st March to 31st December. How many months? Two months, ten months. Calculate 21,000 into two by twelve. I think this is 3,500 and this is 1,700. I hope that's right. So, chal. Let's see what is the pre-acquisition. These two combined, nine thousand five hundred is pre-acquisition. This seventeen thousand five hundred is post-acquisition. Oh, one second. Seventeen five hundred minus three thousand is also there. So, this fourteen thousand five hundred is post-acquisition. Cross verify again. If it, is it equal to twenty-four thousand or not? Nine five double zero plus fourteen thousand five hundred, perfect twenty four. Keep cross verifying, guys. Should not go wrong in any place. Actually, you can distribute it there itself. I don't have place. I'll just write it here. But you can distribute it there if you have some space in your book. You don't have to write one more working note, guys, for that. Nine thousand five hundred and fourteen thousand five hundred. Distribute, distribute it between H and minority. Seventy-five, twenty-five, twenty-five divided by four. Now it's seventy-five, twenty-five distribution. Now I think you have everything to solve. You can go for your cost of control, minority interest, reserves for CBS. Continue. From here you can continue. Cost of control. Careful. Cost of investment. Check. Point number one. He has acquired a cost of seventy-five thousand less pre-acquisition dividends. Careful with the part of pre-acquisition dividend, guys. If my acquisition is on 1st March 09, 
and he clearly said he participated in the proposed dividend of 8000 this 8000 is last year's dividend so out of 8000 how much this fellow will get 75 percent share so pre acquisition dividend of 2008 8000 into 75% but guys i'll have a portion in 2009 as well because my date of acquisition is first march two months will be considered as pre how much is the dividend of 2009 9000 dividend 75% into 2 by 12 8,000 into 75% is 6,000. This one is 1,125 or 2 pre-acquisition dividends. Net cost is 67,875. Compare it with share in net assets. Share capital. We have taken post bonus, so sixty thousand. Pre acquisition reserves. Seven one two five sixty seven thousand one twenty five and that should give me a goodwill of six fifty. Now, what about the minority then? Keep it simple for the minority interest. Their share in the net assets split it between share capital and reserves. Under reserves, again, we'll have two things pre acquisition reserve and post acquisition reserve. So, share capital, share capital minority is 20,000. The reserves. 2375 3625 There is no proposed dividend in 2011. Check. There is no dividend proposed in 2011. If there was, I would have added. But there is nothing, so I can leave it here. This total is 26,000. I cannot solve my reserves for CBS completely. Because I do not have the holding company share in the reserves. <coughs> what is holding company's balance of reserves? I don't know. So what we'll write in your PNL is only those figures which are supposed to be added. Okay. So what are supposed to be added? First one easily to we can say is this figure. W limited share in post acquisition reserves. of subsidiary W its limited share in the subsidiaries post acquisition reserve 10,875 compulsory other than that what I can add is the dividend post acquisition dividends I have something in 2009 I have something in 2010 2009 total 21,000 dividend my share is 75 percent sorry total dividend is 9,000 my share is 75 percent 10 by 12 can be taken as post acquisition 2010 entire dividend you can take it as post acquisition so 6,000 is the total dividend 75 percent is my share this is 4,500 this one 9,000 into 75 percent into 10 by 12. I think this is 5,625. 
do not add it leave it don't add it there's no point adding it because i need my starting figure i don't have that starting figure only why do you, what is the point of adding just that we are trying to show what are the figures to be added in your results for cbs now it's a similar three adjustments or three working notes which we need for the second and third adjustments as well read the second one Read the second one then. 40,000 of the shares then in issue of W Limited were acquired at a cost of 60,000 on 31st December 2009. H Limited participated in the bonus issue but did not in the proposed end of 9,000. When did he acquire? 31st December 2009. He did not participate in 9,000 dividend. Why he did not participate? Because he has acquired it at X dividend. Okay. So, this probably is a much simpler problem because when we are talking about 31st December, then exactly it is on the balance sheet day. So I don't have the splitting of two per, you know, two months, one month, and all that. And if you observe the pre-acquisition dividend, there's no pre-acquisition dividend at all because he did not participate in 9,000 dividend. Very clearly, he has given he did not participate in the proposed dividend of 9,000. That means for the year 2009, he did not receive any dividend. What he will receive is next year's dividend. Next year's dividend of 6,000. That is which year? 2010 check when is his date of acquisition 31st December 2009 so 2010 dividend is completely post acquisition so I don't have any pre acquisition dividend as far as this problem is concerned so let's start so I'll use the same format My date of acquisition this time around is 31st December 2009. Pre-bonus shares. He participated in the bonus. Before bonus he acquired 40,000 shares. How much bonus he will get? 1 is to 4, 10,000. What is the total shares he holds? 50,000. What are the total shares in the company? 80,000. Minority holds? 30,000. Share holding, I can't get in percentages. I'll take it in ratios. 5 by 8 and 3 by 8, that is total 100%. It's much easier taking as a ratio, ratio, guys. 
shall we go back next i am analyzing with respect to a date of acquisition that is 31st december 2009 this date i know balance balance as on 31st december 2009 31st December 2009 balance. Check at the end of the year. Balance carried forward is 43. But relax. This should be profit of 10 and 11. 10 and 11. We have already solved in the previous problem also. 10 and 11 profits are 10 profit is 7000, 6000 distributed as dividend, 1000 remaining. Next year 4000 rupees of loss. This is minus three. So obviously this is not correct. So there should be an adjustment for bonus. Always out of pre-acquisition reserves, sixteen thousand bonus. This will leave it, leave me a balance of twenty-seven. Check twenty-seven minus three, perfect. Yes. So this twenty-seven is pre, minus three thousand is post. Twenty-seven thousand pre minus three thousand is post. Split five by eight. Split five by eight, three by eight. Guys, you can split it there itself. Twenty-seven thousand. You can branch it out into two parts. You don't have to prepare one more distribution table at all. Complete, complete. You will complete.
So yes guys, so the cost of investment you get directly pick up from there, 60,000, there's no pre-acquisition dividend guys because 2009 dividend of 9,000 rupees, he did not participate in that. That was the last sentence. So I haven't taken any pre-acquisition dividend here, it will be zero. 2010 dividend, whatever he receives will be taken as post-acquisition dividend, will not appear here. Your share in net assets, directly 50,000 share capital plus 16,875 rupees of pre-acquisition reserve will result in a capital reserve of 6875 minority interest is just a share and share capital of 30 picked it up from here pick up the reserves now pre acquisition reserve is 10125 and post acquisition is 1125 this will result in 41250 Yes guys, I'm really sorry, this is negative. So if this is taken as negative, then this should be only 39 then. Super. Share in post acquisition reserves, in reserves for CBS, minus 1875. Post acquisition dividend is 2010 dividend, 6000 dividend, his share is 5 by 8 out of this. Let's start solving for the third bit then. What is the third book talking about? 60,000 shares then in issue of W Limited were acquired at 80,000 on 1st July 2011. Did not participate in dividend of 6,000. Observe carefully the date. Observe the date carefully. Very important guys. Reason is very simple. When did he acquire? It was on 1st July 2011. Guys, he is acquiring in the year 2011. That means the bonus is already over. The bonus component is not there now. Bonus has already been declared, already been received. So 60,000 shares is a proportion of this 80,000 now. He did not participate in this 6,000 dividend of 2010. So there is no pre-acquisition dividend. One more reason. There is no post-acquisition also now. Because there is no dividend which he received in 2011. But whatever loss is made in 2011, I have to split into two parts. Because a pre-acquisition part and a post-acquisition part, his acquisition is 1st July. That means half. Half is pre, half is post. So start solving. Last one looks sounds a more simpler bit. First July 2011 date of acquisition. 
date of acquisition is 1st July 2011. Under the shareholding patterns, guys, his acquisition is on 1st July 2011 after bonus. So don't add bonus after this. 60,000 shares itself is after bonus. This is after bonus only. There is no bonus to be added now. The balance are held by minority. 20,000. Total is 80,000 shares. 75% and 25%. I am analyzing with respect to 1-7-2011. My analysis of reserves is with respect to 1-7-2011. Check what is the reserve? 24,000 on 112. What is the earliest date that I can take? I am analyzing with respect to 1-7-2011. So I will take it on 2010. End of 2010 what was the balance? 28. So my profit of 11 is negative 4. Already given to you. I am not writing anything new. Or you can directly take like this. If this is 28. Closing is 24. So obviously this is negative 4. Date of acquisition is 1.7. This is total total year's profit. So what do we do? Split. Up to 1.7. From 1.7 to 31st December. Exactly half. 2000 and 2000. Pre-acquisition is 26. Post acquisition is negative 2. Cross verify 26 minus 2, balance back to 24. Splitting it in the ratio of 75 25. Split it into the ratios of 75 and 25. Cost of investment he is acquired at a cost of 80,000. Pre acquisition dividend nil. Because he clearly said he did not participate in the dividend of 6,000 of 2010. So no pre acquisition. Share in net asset, share capital is 60,000. This is 19,500 pre acquisition. Total is 79,500. That means I will get a goodwill. Five hundred rupees. Goodwill is five hundred. I have taken this nineteen five hundred as pre-acquisition reserve. Sixty thousand as a share capital. Minority share capital is twenty. Reserves, pre-acquisition and post-acquisition, 6,500 and minus 500. Share in post-acquisition reserves, minus 1,500 and...
You can cross verify this minority interest with the first bid answer. First bit also we have the same shareholding patterns, 75-25. So basically 25% of the net assets as on 31st December 2011. That won't change, right? So 25% bid whenever is the date of acquisition, it is always 26,000 as a minority interest. First bit we have the same answer, third bit we have the same answer for minority interest. Minority interest will never change with the date of acquisition. It is only with respect to the share, that's it. Yes guys, 24th Simple problem guys, not many adjustments at all Read through On 30th June, the draft balance sheet of the company showed the following position Check, there are some fixed assets he is starting with, there are some investments, there are some current assets Current liabilities also which he is showing a link the balance sheet he has given but what we are more concerned about is the investment part and also with those reserves. What are the reserves? There is a capital reserve and a revenue reserve, two reserves which are given to you. And you also obtain the following information. So there are three companies now, Rock, King, Chair. So this Rock, King and Chair, let's see the information given. King, that is the second column, acquired 6800 shares of shares of chair limited at 22 rupees per share in 2009 when the balance in the capital reserve was 15,000 and its revenue reserves were 30,500 consolidated. So 30,500 rupees of P or revenue reserve and 15,000 rupees of capital reserve. That is sufficient enough to find out your distribution table also unless there is some adjustments. I don't, it doesn't look like there is some adjustment guys. Check. Rock Limited purchased 8,000 shares in King in 2009. So Rock is the main holding company looks like because King holds in chair. So Rock holds purchased 8,000 shares in King in 2009 when the balance of the revenue reserve was 40,000 rupees. Rock purchased further 4,000 shares in King in 2010 when the reserve revenue reserve balance was 45,000. And Rock Limited had no other investments as on 30th June 2012. So that means directly Rock Limited's investments check on the asset side 160. That 160 is the total cost of investment in King Limited. So there are two dates of acquisition, multiple dates of acquisition which are given to you now. So one acquisition happened in 2009, second acquisition happened in 2010. So multiple dates of acquisition for Rock and King. King in chair only one date of acquisition. So proposed dividends from the subsidiary are included in the figures of debtors in respect of parent company. So that means check the liability side, current liabilities. Can you see proposed dividends then? Yes. Those proposed dividends, he is saying that it is already included in the dividend receivables. What is he saying? It is included in the debtors in the account of parent company because it is a dividend declared by the subsidiary receivable by the holding. So such dividend receivable, he is saying he already recorded it. That means he already took it to p &L and he included it in debtors. He increased on the liability side the p &L, he increased on the asset side the debtors. So what do we have to do? Cancel the debtor and whatever minority interest share is there, we will add it to minority interest and close it. That's it. Got it? So, should I add again dividend receivable in p &L, consolidated p &L? Not Not necessary because it is already included. So let's start. There's no pre acquisition dividend, nothing, guys. Simple problem. Acquisitions dated back to 2009 2010s. Current year is not pre acquisition for them. Whatever dividend you pay now.
and there are no adjustments as far as the results are concerned as well. It's a pretty simple problem. The uh, only adjustment is the last third adjustment. We haven't seen those type of adjustments where the dividend is proposed by the subsidiary and already included in the holding company's P&L. Well, this is a very peculiar adjustment that we have come across now. My date of acquisition, I can't write one single date of acquisition. So how do we write now? Rock and King, two dates of acquisition, 2009 as well as 2010. Two years he purchased. Two times. But King in chair, acquisition only in 2009. Check out your shareholding patterns. When we are talking about shareholding pattern, let us talk about the first subsidiary then. Not the indirect one. I am talking about King. In King, Rock holds two shares. One purchased in 2009, other one purchased in 2010. Balance should be held by minority then. Hundred percent holding. Number of shares in King. Check the share capital. Each share is divided into ten rupees. Share capital is one lakh fifty. Fifteen thousand shares. Number of shares held. He purchased 8,000 shares in 2009 and another 4,000 shares in 2010. So year 8, year 4. His total number of shares are 12. Minority holds 3. Percentage holding is 80-20. Then for chair, rock does not hold in chair, only king holds in chair, king and minority. Select, come on, number of shares, total number of shares are 80,000 share capital, 10 rupees each, number of shares are 8,000, held by king. Point number 1, 6,800 shares held by King and 1,200 shares held by minority. This should be 85.15. Some peculiar percentage guys, a little bit. Calculations, be quick on your calculators. What is the first subsidiary I have to analyze? Indirect subsidiary. Compulsory whenever you have a chain holding, we need to start with our indirect subsidiary. What is the indirect subsidiary we have? Chair Limited. So start with Chair. Chair Limited's p and have uh, Chair Limited, I have a capital reserve as well as a revenue reserve. I have both. Guys, we can directly go for the distribution, don't analyze. Distribution of reserves. First for chair. Pre and post. Under post I have capital reserve and revenue reserve. First reserve, I will take capital reserve. Next one, I am taking revenue reserve. And then strike a total and happily distribute. Come on. Capital reserve. When King acquired in chair in 2009, capital reserve was 15,000 pre- What is the capital reserve as far as the balance sheet is concerned? In chair limited balance sheet, balance is 23. So 8000 is post. What about revenue reserve? On the date of acquisition, revenue reserve was 30,500. 
What is the balance sheet figure? 45,060. So that means this is 15,560. 14,560. 14,560. So this is 45,500, 8,000, 14,560. Distribute. Chair limited. King and minority. King, 85, minority, 15, Three seventy six and one two one eight four. Now go for King. Distributions, pre-acquisition and post-acquisition, post-acquisition, capital reserve and revenue reserve. King, come on. I have only one reserve that is revenue reserve if you observe. For king I don't have a capital reserve. Revenue reserve also when we analyze first we analyze with respect to date of first acquisition. First acquisition that is in 2009 balance of revenue reserve was how much? 40. How much should be post then? 40 pre total is 49,370 or 9,370 is post. But when we are solving for king, we also have to add his share in post acquisition reserves of? Yes. Post acquisition reserves of chair. What is the share in post acquisition reserves of chair? Check post acquisition reserves of chair. 6,800 for capital reserve. 12,376 for revenue reserves. Total is 40,000, 6,800 and this is 21,746. Distribute. Rock holds 80%. Minority hold 20%. 32,000 Seven. Check your accuracy of your calculations, guys. 
my information is not sufficient because I need to redistribute. I have a redistribution to be done as far as King Limited is concerned. Because King Limited has double dates of acquisition or multiple date of acquisition. So the second date of acquisition was with respect to 2010. So I have to redistribute. Redistribution. When we are redistributing, I'll only take Rock Limited share. I don't want any other share. 32,000, 5440, 17,397. So my redistribution with respect to 2nd acquisition that is 2010 percentage holding acquired how much did you acquire subsequently check share holding pattern 2010 rock acquired 4000 shares out of 15000 shares I don't want a percentage I'll write it as 4 by 15 no problem. My profit earned from first acquisition to second acquisition. How much? Check. What was the first acquisition revenue reserve was 40. Further he purchased 4000 shares in 2010 when the revenue reserve was 45. 5. Redistribute 4 by 5 into 5000. Right, 4 by 15 into 5000. 4 by 15 into 5000. I think 1 triple 3. Deduct from pre, add to post. Sorry, deduct from post, add to pre. So this will be Information is sufficient guys for your cost of control, minority interest and reserves for CBS. No pre-acquisition dividends. Cost of control. I need two columns. Rock in king. King in chair. Yes guys, so I have a cost of investment. I will start with that. Careful when you write this guys. Rock in King. <clears throat> that is point number two. Did he give you any cost of acquisition? No. And towards last he said, Rock Limited had no other investment. That means whatever investment is there in Rock Limited, that is entirely the investment in King. Directly I can pick up that figure of 1,60,000. What about rock in chair? Sorry, king in chair. King in chair, actually if you observe, my cost of investment <coughs> in the balance sheet is 1,50,000. But, check down below. King Limited acquired 6,800 shares in chair limited at 22 rupees per share. 
when the cost is already given to you clearly, don't take your balance sheet figure. Multiply and take the figure. 6,800 into 22 is... 1,49,600. So there are 400 rupees of other investments which are existing in King. There is no pre-acquisition dividend. Directly you can compare this with share in net assets. Share capital and their share in pre-acquisition reserves. Check share capital. Brock and King. Can you see the share holding pattern? Each share consists of 10 rupees each. So Rock and King is 12,000 shares, 1,20,000. King in chair, 6,800 shares, 68,000. Pre-acquisition reserves, Rock and King, 33,333. King in chair, 38,675. 1,53,333. This is 1,16,000, no, 1,6,000, 675. Both cases we get a goodwill. Here it is 6667. And here it is 42,000. 925. My combined goodwill in both the cases combined is 49,592. Combined goodwill. Two minority interests, one in king, one in chair. Minority interest, it is nothing but his share and share net assets, split it between share capital, reserves, 
pre-acquisition and post-acquisition. Under post-acquisition, again, I have a capital reserve and revenue reserve. Along with that, do not forget to add their share in proposed dividend as well. I'll give us the final answer. Share capital, each share is 10 rupees. In King, 30,000. In chair, 12,000. Reserves, let me first complete in king. 8,000 pre-acquisition. Post-acquisition, 1360 and 4349. In chair, check the distribution. 6825, 1200, 2184. <clears throat> proposed dividend, check dividend what is the dividend in king dividend in king is 60,000 minority share in king 20% dividend is 12,000 in chair 40,000 proposed dividend 15% belongs to minority 6,000 Get the totals now. This is fifty five thousand seven zero nine twenty eight two eighty one, and on a combined basis, this is eighty three thousand, no, eighty four thousand. T eight two nine nine this is so this is eighty three thousand <clears throat> nine one eight reserves for CBS capital reserve and revenue reserve. Start with the Rock Limited balance. Rock Limited balance in the reserves 50,000 and 99540. Share in post acquisition reserves. of king only king There's, they don't have in chair rock and king post acquisition reserves 5440160064 there is a dividend proposed by the subsidiary so he should be receiving the dividend Dividend receivable I won't add because of the last line. Normally I would have added, normally I would have, but check the last line. Proposed dividend of subsidy is already included in the figures of the debtors in the accounts prepared by parent company. That means this dividend receivable has already been taken by the parent company. I don't have to add the dividend anymore now. So that's it. All the adjustments that we have. You can pick up the closing figures. Fifty-five four forty and one lakh fifteen thousand six zero four.
So let's get the balance sheet guys now. Be slightly careful when we are drafting the balance sheet especially when it comes to the datas because it includes the value of dividend which should be eliminated from there. Rest everything is fine except for the datas part of it. A consolidated balance sheet of rock. As on 30th June 2012, equity and liabilities. Shareholders funds. Under shareholder funds, we have share capital. Just check the share capital from Rock, for Lock Rock Limited. What is given in the balance sheet there? Balance sheet holds share capital of 2 lakhs. My reserves and surplus. Your cost of control did not give you a capital reserve. But there is a capital reserve in the balance sheet which we are taking from reserves for CBS. My capital reserve is 55,440 from um, your reserves for CBS and your revenue reserve stands at 1,15,604. Minority interest total is 83,918. There is no non-current liabilities, there is only current liabilities I guess. Yep, only current liabilities. First current liability that I see there is creditors. You don't have to eliminate anything, there is no intercompany owing which is given to you. So you can just straightforward add up the figures. 1,12,060 plus 73,130 plus 78,190 2,63,380 Then I have taxation that is provision for tax Simple addition gives you 52,000 Then comes my proposed dividend what happened to the proposed dividend in subsidiary? Subsidiaries get eliminated. Holding companies proposed dividend is existing. How did the subsidiaries proposed dividend get eliminated? A portion of proposed dividend I added here. Yes. And a portion I will cancel it with the dividend receivable in the datas. So proposed dividend gets cancelled for the subsidiary. What we have is only the holding companies proposed dividends. Assets, non-current assets, tangible fixed assets, check the tangible fixed assets guys, tangible fixed assets, yep 1,35 plus 60 plus 70 is 2,65. Intangible assets I have a goodwill. You have just identified goodwill in your cost of control 49,592. Other non current assets I have here investments. It 
check. Rock Limited investment 1,60,000 is completely the investment in share. But King Limited's in, uh, sorry, in King, King Limited's 1,50,000 investment, investment in share is 149,600. 400 rupees plus share limited is 10,000, total is 10,400. Then come your current assets. Get the current assets now. I have three current assets. First one, stock. Second one, debtors. Finally, last one, bank. First stock total, <coughs> straightforward addition. Total gives you 55,240 plus 36,840 plus 61,760 total is 133,840. 153,840. Debtors. Guys, debtors, I have to cancel dividend receivable. Now, how much is the value of dividend <coughs> receivables? In King Limited Debtor, in, sorry, in King Limited Debtors, I will have dividend receivable from chair. Yes? Now, how much is King Limited in Chair Limited percentage holding? King Limited in Chair Limited percentage holding was <coughs> 85. So, what is the proposed dividend in Chair? 40. So, out of 40,000, what is 85,000? 34,000. So, 34,000 is the dividend receivable of King in Chair included in the debtors. So, what I have to eliminate from debtors is one figure of 34,000. That is King in Chair. Same way, Rockin' King. Rockin' King, total amount of dividend is, proposed dividend in King is 60. How much is held by Rockin' King? 80%. So, 80% of 60,000 is 48. 48. These two figures should be eliminated. Or the easiest way to check is, check here. Out of 40,000 dividend in chair, how much is, how much is minority interest? 6,000. So, balance 34, eliminate from holding company share. King limited, 12,000 out of total dividend of 60. Balance 48, eliminate. So, 34 eliminate, 48 eliminate. What is the total? So, it should be data. So, 1,10,070 plus 69,120 plus 93,880 minus 34 minus 48. How much? 199070. 191.070 Bank Bank balance add it A simple addition of those figures is required Find out that Bank is two double zero four double four four zero, and that should total your balance sheet. And the balance sheet total is eight seven zero. 870342 Balance sheet should tally guys